Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own Linux Forensics thumb drive. You know, we talked in a previous video about how you need to have a thumb drive or a CD-ROM, possibly both, that has the system binaries on it. And it might also be convenient if you had a live Linux distro that was oriented toward doing forensics available as well. So I'm going to take a thumb drive here. And the first thing you might want to do with your thumb drive is partition it. So I have just a basic cheapo 16 gig for this demonstration but I would recommend if you can do it get at least a 16 gig drive and also it might be worthwhile to splurge for a USB 3 drive if you've seen my USB videos you know that USB is horrible in terms of writing speed, but USB 3 is worth it for reading from the disk. All right, so let's get started. Here I'm at a prompt. I've inserted my drive. Now, in most cases, it will automatically get mounted as soon as you insert the drive and that doesn't seem to be the case here for me let's see where the drive is so if you do an ls of slash dev sd star you should see various drives now mine already came up with two partitions because I partitioned it earlier most drives, when you buy them, will come pre-formatted with either FAT or NTFS. Neither of these is what you really want for mounting your system binaries. Think about it for a second. Uh, you look at things like permissions. FAT doesn't preserve those. So it doesn't sound like something that's ideal for system binaries. So here's what you can do. Run FDisk. On the appropriate device in my case it's SDC and I can print it out and I see that I've already created two partitions for the sake of this video I'm just going to go ahead and delete them and I'll create new ones so I'll say the command to create a new partition is just N I want it to be a primary partition, partition number one, and its first sector will be at 2048, and I will make this first partition 8GB. I will hit N again to create a second partition, also a primary partition, partition number two, I will just accept the defaults. If I type in P to print my partition table, you see that sure enough, I have two partitions. Now they are both currently marked as being Linux partitions, and I probably need to change that. So I will go ahead and look at the type, I'll type T for the type command it says which partition and I'll say one and I can't remember the codes let's say so I can type L to list all of the various codes and you'll notice that one of the possibilities is W95 Windows 95 FAT32 LBA that's probably a good choice and I'll use that one code C now if I reprint with P, you'll see that sure enough, 
now that partition is marked as being FAT32. And this is necessary in order for a couple of things to happen. Now, first of all, again, as we talked about in the USB videos, Windows is pretty stupid and it only sees the first partition. And additionally, that first partition has to be FAT or NTFS, or it's not going to read it. So here, we're setting that up so that we can install Ubuntu onto that partition, a live version of Ubuntu. So I'm done. I'll say W for write and quit. And now I'm ready to go ahead and install Ubuntu on my first partition. And the command is USB dash creator GTK. Go ahead and run that. And in my case, it might yell at me a little bit. All right. And it says, where is your image? It already found my image here in my downloads folder for Ubuntu 1404.2, 64-bit version. And here's the device to use. So I will click on Make Startup Disk. Now, one thing I might want to do before I do that is here there's an option for a persistence file. And you can choose how much persistent storage you want. I'm going to choose about two gigabytes. Should be enough. I'll make my startup disk. And now we see that our installation is complete. I'll go ahead and quit. But we're not quite done yet because we need to make a file system on our second partition. And we also need to copy some system binaries. So let me go ahead and get a root shell. And the first thing I need to do is, once again, let's verify that we don't have this mounted and just check where is this device. It's on SDB at the moment. So I'm going to use make file system x3 on slash dev slash sdb2. And this will take just a little bit of time as it goes out and I see my thumb drive is being accessed while it writes the various information. Again, it's important that this is not a FAT file system because the FAT file system will not do what we need. It's not going to set up permissions and things like that appropriately for systems binaries. And that's why a lot of these live Linux systems, you'll see they create something like a Casper file and they install an X3, usually, file system inside of it. So when you set up that persistent file on Ubuntu, that's what you're getting. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. And we All right, now that my file system has been made, I can go ahead and make sure that this gets mounted. Now the easiest and laziest way to do this is just to remove and then reinsert your thumb drive and Ubuntu has recognized my new thumb drive both partitions and I can actually look here's my second partition which is kind of empty and if you're not sure that you've got the right one you can always look at the other one as well. So this one definitely looks like the one that has live Ubuntu on it and this 
is the other one. And you'll notice the names for each partition. Okay, so we're almost there. And this has been mounted under media. So if I do an LS media fill, I will see these two partitions. I can just go to my root directory, for example, or I can go directly to that drive. I think I'll go to the drive. It's this one. There's nothing there but lost and found. I will make a directory. I'll call it x64 for 6-bit, 64-bit binaries. I'll call it x64 for 64-bit binaries. And now I will change that directory. And I will do a copy recursively with permissions of sbin to dot slash dot. I will also copy recursively with permissions from bin to dot slash dot. That's done. If I do an ls, I see that I have bin and sbin, and it has all of the normal things I would expect. Some of these things are going to be broken because it has symbolic links, but don't worry about that because these are not the programs that you're likely trying to use either. And that's all you have to do. So that's all. That's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you next time.